Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to our fourth Sunday of Easter live stream here at uh, Holy Cross. We welcome those who are joining us, whether you're uh, just across the street uh, right here in the neighborhood or uh, tuning in from halfway around the world. I was watching uh, the Bible class earlier and noted we had people from Palestine and from Ukraine and from other parts of Canada uh, tuning in and maybe from other places as well. We welcome you here to this uh, service uh, this morning. Um, a couple of weeks ago when we celebrated Easter, we all remarked at how unusual and perhaps uh, sad it was that uh, we would have to celebrate Easter this year in an empty church. Uh, that, was, that was a bit problematic, um, but I think of, of um, today, I think, is an even a bit more sort of a sadder uh, event uh, to have an empty uh, church, because if you're a part of our congregation or have been uh, following us for the last while, you know that uh, today is the last Sunday for uh, Pastor Signs uh, to officially preach as our assistant pastor. And uh, these are typically days that uh, the church is filled and there is a lot of time of uh, fellowship and time to visit and to say thank you, not just to God, but to uh, Pastor and Anita. Uh, however, that's not uh, the world we're living in right now, and uh, so we are doing this virtually. And I know many of you have sent uh, emails and cards and uh, other uh, things to him, and I continue to encourage you to do that in the days ahead. And just as a note uh, right off the bat, uh, this will not be the final farewell. <laughs> The last farewell, or the next farewell, will be sometime when it's safe for us all to gather back together again, and we will do this the proper way uh, with all of the trimmings and uh, all of the festivities associated with a pastor entering into retirement. Um, the other bit of good news that I share with you today is that uh, it is Good Shepherd Sunday. The fourth Sunday after Easter is always Good Shepherd Sunday. And um, it, it's a reminder, uh, under shepherds come and go, um, but the good shepherd, he remains. And it's upon him that we will focus our attention this morning, as well as giving thanks for Pastor Signs and Anita and their ministry to us. If you've downloaded our order of service or have it available, printed out, or maybe on another electronic device, our opening hymn is uh, one of Pastor Signs' favorite Easter hymns, uh, He's Risen, He's Risen. It's number 480 if you're using a hymnal at home, uh, and we'll join together to sing.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who Who made made heaven heaven and and earth. earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But But with with you you there there is forgiveness, forgiveness. therefore Therefore you are feared. He has given him dominion over all the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. Alleluia. Alleluia. Dear friends in Christ, since we are gathered to hear God's word and to call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I invite you to take just a brief moment of, uh, for silence and, of silence and reflection upon God's word and self-examination. We join together. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to to everlasting life. life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us all our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst now, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We join to sing the hymn of praise, glory to God in the highest. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him, 
who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're going to turn our attention now to the scripture readings uh, for this, the fourth Sunday in the season of Easter. Our first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles and describes the reaction uh, to Peter's sermon on Pentecost Sunday when he proclaimed the resurrection of Jesus. And it's what happens still today in the church. Every time God's people gather together, we are devoted to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, breaking of bread and prayers. And God continues to add to the number of those being saved. From Acts chapter 2. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. And awe came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God, and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number, day by day, those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It'll come as uh, no surprise that the psalm for a Good Shepherd Sunday is the Good Shepherd Psalm, Psalm number 23, and I will read it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the epistles, the letters in the Bible. Today uh, we continue from uh, the first letter of Peter in the second chapter, uh, where he talks to the, uh, the hearers about uh, the suffering that they are enduring and reminding them that uh, being a follower of Christ means that sometimes you are subjected to some of the same things that Christ was subjected to but that he went through death and suffering for us and is now the shepherd and overseer of our souls. From 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 19 to 25. This is a gracious thing. When mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if you, when you sin, are beaten for it and you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. And by his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned 
to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Now, Pastor Sines, we have a special anthem for you. I'm not sure from the place you're sitting that you can see the monitor screen that we have here, but you'll want to move yourself uh, so that you can. A number of people have been working in the background over the last uh, number of weeks to put together uh, a special anthem, and, uh, and uh, deep thanks go to Lenora and Cameron who put this video uh, together, and this will serve as our anthem today. God It says that God keeps me. God loves me. In the Bible book it says that God loves me. To some of the young people you have touched, some you have baptized uh, in your time here, and uh, uh, for whom I think you have a little gift coming as well not to let any cats out of the bag too early. Our Gospel reading uh, for this Good Shepherd Sunday is from the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, to you o, Lord. o Lord. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow. But they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. O Christ. We'll join together now in the confession of our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of a body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Our sermon hymn this morning is one of the many hymns written on Psalm number 23, perhaps the most uh, well-known here at Holy Cross. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. If you're using a hymnal at home, it's hymn number 710. Here I am. Now, all the kids that are watching right now, and well, the grown ups too, be quiet. That's right. Now, sit properly because I've got something for you. Thank you for those that have sang that anthem for me. That was really great. But remember, I told you in the email that I sent out there'd be something special for you guys, and you're going to need to respond. Let's see if you can do that. Don't worry if anybody's sitting beside you, but I think you know this one from all the days of vacation Bible school, right? Are you ready? God is so good, God is so good, God is so good, He's so good to me. Are you ready? Attitude check. I didn't hear you. Praise Try it again. Lord. Attitude check. Praise, Praise the, Lord. the Lord. Yes. In these times when it's difficult, we need to do an attitude check, don't we? because we're stuck in the house or whatever may happen. But God is there. He's still our good shepherd. He's still with us. And just during those times when we kind of don't know what's going on and everything seems to be different, we can do an attitude check and praise the Lord because God is so good. He's so good to me. God is so good. He's so good to me. God is so good. So good to me. Attitude check. Praise, Praise the, Lord. the Lord. Now, I hope you haven't yelled into your brothers' and sisters' ears when we said that. But all those years of vacation Bible school, it's been great to have you come and join us as we talk about Jesus and who Jesus is in our lives. 
It's interesting, isn't it? Today we're looking at the fourth Sunday of Easter, and it's Good Shepherd Sunday. And maybe in the reading I'm going to do something because I sometimes do these things. It talked about Jesus and what was Jesus. Do you remember, boys and girls, when you were listening? He was the Good Shepherd, but the Good Shepherd was also the gate, wasn't he? Do you know why? In February, Anita and I just came back from Israel, and we looked at some of the sheep pens that are out there, and they don't have very much wood in Israel. They got lots of stones, and so they make pens out of stones, but then what do you do with the opening? You can't make a stone gate. You can't make stones and then open them. So what did the shepherd do? Well, if you pretend that this altar area here is the sheepfold, and God is calling you into the sheepfold, the shepherd would sit right here. So he would be the gate. He would just probably just lie down in the front here so that all the sheep would have to come in through him or they couldn't get out without his protection and without his knowing. Now that'll be a good visual illustration for you. I thought about how to do that. But yeah, because he's the gatekeeper and he's the one that calls you. And when you're safe in his fold, he never lets you go. He's with you every single day in every single way. Well, as we reach into your living rooms or dens or perhaps a hospital room right now or a hotel room or wherever you may find yourself, welcome. It's good to have you here as we do an attitude check. And remember that God is alive and living. He's risen again and he's ours. Now, I know that as you think about this particular day and as we gather, there's probably some other big issues that may come up like, uh, how's your hair holding up? (laughs) I thought about that one actually. Uh, You know, at the beginning of this whole pandemic thing, it was toilet paper, wasn't it? Everybody was taking toilet paper off the shelves, but I mean, I don't have the particular problem with hair that maybe some of you might have, but one of the latest things that is probably running out in the shops is any hair dye or coloring, yeah, because everybody's worried about their roots coming out and all the rest of that and, and so on. Or perhaps you're figuring out the fact that you can't get to a hairdresser, so you're gone to the store to find if you could buy some clippers and maybe do your husband's hair or whoever it might be. And they are also getting sold out in the stores. But I guess that's a first world problem, isn't it? Well, Jesus talks about hair too. Remember when he said in Luke chapter 12, verses 6 and 7, are not five sparrows sold for two pennies, yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You're worth more than many sparrows. I guess I give God an easier job with my head. (laughs) Yeah, God cares about you. If he knows the very hairs on your head, then he certainly knows you. He knows when you sit. He knows when you stand. He knows everything. Even a word before it's on the tip of your tongue, he knows it completely. He knows the struggles you have and the pains you have. and He knows the struggles that you have with the isolation you're dealing with right now. And he knows that you have a desire to want to go back to the things and the way things were and you want to get out of their house and you want to do the things that were fun and meet with all your friends and again, he knows that. Sometimes though, it's good to stop and take inventory, isn't it? To see what good has come out of something that could be so difficult. You know, before this pandemic hit, everybody was too busy, weren't they? The children, well, you know all of your events, your sports events that you had to go to or skating or dance lessons or whatever it was and then school and all the rest of that and mom and dad were busy working and they didn't have any time and now all of a sudden, bang, you got lots of time. As a matter of fact, you might be going crazy at home with all the time you have and what are you going to do? Yeah, because we had to work all the time. And now I, I think about it, it's been probably a little over 40 days, hasn't it, with this pandemic. That's a significant number in the Bible, you know. 40 is a number where Moses and the people were in the wilderness for 40 years. Talk about being self-isolated. And then Jesus was in the desert completely by himself for 40 days. And Noah and his family were stuck in the ark, self-isolating for 40 days. When the floods came, how did they deal with the ark? And maybe the smell in the ark too, if you really think about it. And then it was 40 days after the resurrection before Jesus finally ascends into heaven. We talked about that a little bit last week. Remember how he ascends into heaven? His arms are outreached, and we'll hear that in one of the readings later on. And he blesses the disciples, and he blesses all God's people. And while his arms are open, and while he's blessing them, he ascends into heaven. In other words, that we live in the 24-7 blessing of Jesus. Amazing, isn't it? And then, if you think about it for a moment, 40 days of the coronavirus, 40 days to give, up, uh, to give us the opportunity to take a moment and refocus recalibrate, we think about our lives. And then as I think about it, so what's happening right now? I'm not sure how many people, how many people are tuned in right now? Um, 
289. So that's like about 600 people probably that are watching right now. That's pretty amazing. Martin Luther, 500 years ago, points out that every home is a church. And in every head of the household is like a pastor or a spiritual leader. And when you gather together to, as a family to read God's word or to read a devotion or to come to worship, it's like your family altar at home. It's like all of these house churches are meeting right now, all over the world, everywhere right now because of the pandemic. They're all together and, and hopefully they're connecting into live streaming so that they can see that God is with them and, and that he's caring for them and he's still with us. He's reaching you right where you are through his word, his presence in that word. John reminds us of that. We talked a little bit about that before. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through Him all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that's been made. In Him, in Jesus, there's life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness hasn't understood it. So when we do an attitude check, we praise the Lord because He gives us life and gives us light. And then he goes on, John says, yet to all who received him, to those who believe in his name, he gave right to become the children of God. Children not born of natural descent or human decision or a husband's will, but children born of God. And then the word became flesh and dwelt among us, tabernacled with us, just as he is right now in your living room, in your hospital room, in your care home, in your hotel room. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, We've seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. How amazing it is that God and Jesus dwell with man. And then in Colossians, Paul writes, he's the image of the invisible God, this Jesus, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven, things on earth, visible and in invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. So how are you holding up? Well, let me tell you who's holding you together. That's Jesus. He's holding the whole world together. No matter what situation we find ourselves, no matter which generation we're in, no matter what struggle we're going through, Jesus is there for us. This is the Jesus who lived his life and was tempted in every way that we were, but he didn't give in to temptation. He didn't sin. He lived the perfect life. Then this Jesus who experienced all sorts of pain and heartache and injustice and abandonment, he was betrayed, remember, and he was denied and found himself all alone as everybody abandoned him. And then he took your wrongs and my wrongs, those wrongs we do against God and one another. The Bible calls that sin. And even when we didn't know him or even were antagonistic to him, maybe some of you are watching right now and you're not believers in Jesus, that's okay. He comes to you anyways. He speaks to you through his word. He loves you. He calls you. He woos you. He blesses you. He invites you to respond in faith to him. Yes, he's the one that took our place and died on the cross in our stead to give us forgiveness, forgiveness of sin, and to make us right with God, to give us life, and not just plain boring life, but abundant life. That's the text for today that I want to point out. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Perhaps that's the coronavirus or, or whatever it might be. But I have come that they may have life and have life to the full. That's the Jesus who died on the cross for your sins and mine. He's come to give us abundant life. Yeah, he knows what you're going through. Whether you're five years old or 10 years old or 50 years old or 90 years old, he's right there, he knows. He's with us on the journey and he cares for us. He saved us and has brought us to another kingdom, his kingdom of grace and forgiveness and life. In our gospel reading for today, we talked about the good shepherd, right? And that's what we need, isn't it? We need a good shepherd. We need a shepherd, one who knows our troubles and struggles, who's with us and cares for us and loves us and rescues us even when we continue to fail and fall short of God's glory and his perfection. He covers us with his perfection and gives to us his righteousness and that changes everything. Isn't it amazing? But Jesus warns us here that in our journey, there's all sorts of voices that are calling out there. All sorts of voices that are wanting to steal our joy and take away our peace and remove our focus and get us to focus on problems and hurts and tragedies and struggles with no hope, with cynicism and negativism. Yeah, there's a thief that wants to rob your joy, the joy that Jesus gives. There's a thief that wants to take you away from God and snatch you away from him. He can't do that, but he, he wants to do that. So he tries all sorts of ways to distract you or get you to listen to other voices. You know, those are the voices that have a negative emotional impact on us so that we can get up, caught up in our feelings and soon allow the feelings to be our master instead of feelings be our servant. Do you have that problem sometime where 
Your feelings get so out of control in you that you're governed and your emotions are leading you and you can't think of anything good. You're just having a bad, terrible, whole, horrible, no good, very bad day. You know what Alexander said in that story, don't you? That's when we let our feelings take over. But we need to also realize that God is there in the midst of our feelings and he embraces us. So how are you holding up? How are you doing on your journey? And who are the voices that are grabbing at your heart and your mind and feeding your emotions? Well, that isn't new. Jesus tells us that there are other shepherds out there in the world who try to hijack our thoughts, destroy our world, mess up our journey, and make it very difficult. You know, I was thinking for a moment, I'm retiring on this Sunday, and you're not here. Well, first of all, let me give you a virtual hug. There you go. <laughs> yes, I miss all of you. But I thought, that's okay. Because I can reach more people right now through the streaming that's happening than I could that would fill this building. And besides, I'm really not really good at saying goodbyes. That's really hard on me. I like to say, till we meet again. That's a better thing. And besides, the Lord is with us. He carries us. He's our good shepherd. And we're in his sheepfold. And so whether it's here on planet Earth or whether it's there in God's paradise, we're going to be with each other and see each other again. We're connected, you see, by the good shepherd who died for us and who lives again. So how are you doing? Perhaps today you're feeling like a sheep that's gone astray maybe. Or perhaps you feel like a sheep that's been forgotten. Well, I've got good news for you. God doesn't forget you. (laughs) Jesus has already died on the cross so that you could receive the wonderful matchless grace that he gives to you and me. He loves each of you, no matter how you feel about yourself. And it doesn't matter how your emotions are messing with you right now. God still loves you. Even when you're having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day, he comes right into your heart and says, attitude check. Praise the Lord. Because sometimes the things around us aren't things that we can be happy about, but the Lord is. He's always with us, and he never leaves us or forsakes us. He comes to you right through the power of his word, right into your heart, into your mind. Yes, that Jesus comes to you now with a gift and a promise, and that resurrected Christ changes everything. You know, sometimes it's helpful when you're feeling all of this pressure, and and you think about it right now in the world in which we're living in, you're, you're kind of going through your own grieving process. The loss of your school friends right now and the loss of being able to go to school or the loss of being able to go to dance class or the loss of being able to have your piano recitals or your exams or what's going to happen? Am I going to be able to graduate? I mean, all of those things can just pile themselves up on you. And maybe sometimes it's just good to take a deep breath, hold it in, let it out, and realize that God is still in control and that he cares for you. He tells us in Matthew chapter 11, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and lean from me, learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. That's the good shepherd. He's the one that comes to you right where you are, right in your space, and says, you're not alone, I'm with you. That's the grace gift of being able to come to Jesus with all our struggles and all our weariness, and we'll find our rest in him. That's the grace gift that God comes to you and in the midst of all the ways we mix up things and fail and fall short of his glory. And while I'm speaking to you, if I've offended anybody, I ask for your forgiveness. Christ comes and forgives you. He forgives me. That's his grace gift. And that's an amazing thing because Jesus is our good shepherd. He speaks to us through his word. We saw that in John, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and this word dwelt among us and this world, word died for our sins in Jesus and rose again. And that changes everything for me. It isn't easy, but it's wonderful to know that I have God with me in Jesus and that his word sustains and guides and directs me and that nothing can take me from this world because I'm in his hands and in his kingdom and you too when you place your faith in Christ. Now that's the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know that love of God You know, that fellowship of the Holy Spirit that's in you and with you. But let's move on. That grace gift that God has given you and made you to be part of his kingdom is now yours. It's yours to give away, to give to others, yes. His word in your heart and spoken to you is that same word that you can speak to others. Others who have lost their way and others who don't know the way. Others who don't know the love of God in Christ Jesus and are afraid and confused and hurting and feeling left out. You know, in the first few years I was missionary to Ukraine, we had great gatherings of people and they'd all gather together and as they gathered together, I I would just preach the gospel. I mean, I wasn't sure what kind of effect it would have, but it was amazing for all of those hungering souls that felt forlorn and forgotten and failures when the power of God's word was spoken into their lives. Many of them stood up 
and they responded in faith to the gospel, God opened their eyes. He opened their hearts, hundreds of them. Oh, it was an amazing experience to see that no matter what happened in their lives, and their economy was totally busted, the $100 that they would have had that was good to buy whatever they could buy was only, in a couple of months, you could only buy a loaf of bread, and then another couple of months, you couldn't even buy that because the inflation was so bad. And yet those who had faith in Christ knew that their hope wasn't in the economy. It wasn't in the situation in which they found themselves, even though all the stores were empty and you could hardly buy any products. What was holding them up? Jesus. What was helping them to not have fear? Faith in him. What was giving them hope in times of hopelessness? Jesus. That was an attitude check they needed to do to praise God because he is the one from whom all blessings flow. And even when times are difficult, he comes to us and cares for us. Remember in our first reading how the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, that's to the word of God, and to the fellowship with each other and communion and prayer? Well, that changed their hearts. Did you see how Jesus affected their hearts so much that they were no longer hoarders of their material possessions? They didn't hoard their money and put it in bank accounts for a rainy day. No, they took what they had and they shared it with the people around them because they knew that the love of Christ wasn't just words, but the love of Christ was actions as they reached into their wallets and as they reached into their, their, their food banks and as they reached into their material things and they started to share them with the people around them and the people around them were amazed. You see, the people around them were so full of themselves and collecting things and hoarding things and gathering material things that they didn't think anybody would give anything to them for free. And then all of a sudden, these Christians, out of the love of God in Christ Jesus, start to give their material things away and the people around them were absolutely just amazed. And many, many came to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Why? Because the grace gift that God gave to them in dying for them sins and making them his filled them to be grace gifts to others. That's what it's all about, isn't it? It's about understanding the love of God in such a way that it compels us, it moves us, it empowers us to each one reach one, to care for the people around us, to go into the mission field if God calls you to do that and step through those doors where he opens, to reach right into the hearts of people around you that maybe you don't even know or, or people around you that are your neighbors or people around you maybe that have, you've had a bad relationship with and that forgiveness that God gives to you in Christ Jesus empowers you to, to forgive them and you become a grace gift for them. That's our first reading. Everything changed in the apostles' lives and the believers' lives for they no longer were slaves to their things but they were freed to be able to give and share. They were filled with the word of God that became flesh and lived among them as it lives among us. And I thank you as a congregation here at Holy Cross because you've empowered me. Well, you can see that maybe in the passion and the excitement I have to be able to reach out and touch other people and care for them and love them. And But that's Jesus. That's the good shepherd you're looking at, not me. He's the one that does that. An illustration I read this week, and I'm gonna bring this to a close, was from Pastor Greg Finke. Remember, he came here. He has this uh, ministry called Dwelling 314, I think it is. Well, he tells this story, which I want to share. Have you ever thought of yourself as an angel? I mean, an angel like the Lord sent to my friend Scott when he landed in the hospital with COVID-19 in Michigan. You see, somehow Scott had caught the coronavirus and become so dangerously sick that he was hospitalized and placed in an isolation unit. For their own safety, neither family nor friends could be with him. And so Scott was very alone and very weak. He knew he was in danger. His breathing was labored. He would eventually need a ventilator. But would he be able to recover? And that's when the Lord sent his angel. Not one with wings and glory shining, but with flesh and bone and plenty of disinfectant. (laughs) The Lord sent Scott a cleaner, a humble human, a humble human being with a disinfectant in a bucket but an angel of the Lord nonetheless. On the second day of Scott's isolation at the hospital, the cleaner came into his room. As the cleaner did his work, wiping down the knobs, emptying the trash cans, mopping the floors, he spoke words of blessings and encouragement and hope to Scott. God's with you. God's blessing you and helping you to heal. I'm praying for you. He was praying for Scott, that the Lord would help him get stronger every hour of every day. The next day, the cleaner returned and followed the same routine, both for cleaning the room and for delivering a message of encouragement and hope and letting Scott know that he was being prayed for, that the cleaner was placing him right into God's hands. After that second visit, Scott didn't see the cleaner again. This all happened several weeks ago, but Scott still gets emotional telling the story. 
by God's grace, he recovered from COVID-19 and was released from the hospital. He's thankful to God, both the restoring of his health, but also for sending this angel. Why call the humble cleaner an angel? Because the word angel literally means messenger. So that is, someone sent with a message. You see, that's what angels do. <laughs> They're distributors of grace gifts. Well, you can be a grace gift distributor too. An angel of the Lord, if you like. Think of yourself as a humble little delivery boy or delivery girl. Well, I've got a message for you. You can say that God is alive. He cares. He loves us. He's still here. He's the same yesterday as he is today as he is forever. And wherever you go, practice social distancing, but also practice this. Look around to see who God has placed nearby. Ask yourself, who needs a blessing? Maybe it's a printed card you can write somebody, a telephone call you can make, a text message. It's the love of God that empowers you and the Holy Spirit that guides you. Who needs to know that God is for them, not against them? Who needs encouragement, hope, or a smile today? You can be an angel, a grace gift, just like the cleaner was. And so likewise, as you start your day with prayer, announce to the Lord that you're once again available for delivering his messages Invite them to bring to mind family and friends and neighbors or acquaintances who need a message of encouragement. Invite him to bring across your path those who need a message from him. So I leave you today with this grace gift. God in his great love has sent Jesus Christ, that good shepherd, who died on the cross for your sins and calls you to himself. Even if you don't believe in him, he still comes for you. Remember, nobody believed in him at the beginning when he rose from the dead. He loves you. He loves each and every one of us. He is this wonderful grace gift that brings you into a new relationship with God, a right relationship with God through Christ, through his rightness, his righteousness. This is the most incredible grace gift ever given. When we receive this gift and respond in faith to this grace, he then lives in us to be his grace gifts to others. It's all in a word, or sometimes a touch, or sometimes a look. He changes us. He changes everything. He takes away fear with his love and he gives strength to the weary and hope to the hopeless. And he gives to us, remember, that abundant life for he's the good shepherd. I've come so that they may have life, he says, and have it to the full. So how do we begin? Boys and girls, do you remember? God is so good. He's so good to me. God is so good. He's so good to me. God is so good. He's so good to me. Now the words from Paul. After he says, don't be worried about anything. Don't be anxious. But in everything with prayer, petition, and thanksgiving, present your requests to God. He jumps further down and he says, now, in everything. Whatever is right, whatever is precious, whatever is great, whatever is honorable or trustworthy or admirable, think about those things. (laughs) That's an attitude check, isn't it? Think about those things. And may the peace of God, that peace that transcends, that goes beyond all understanding, especially at this time, he'll guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus Amen. Let's turn our hearts to the Lord in a word of prayer. God, you are so good, and we are so grateful for your grace to us, that you died on the cross, that you rose again, that you take us from the sin in our lives, and you bring us into your kingdom, and that you carry us, and that you hold us, and that you love us, no matter if we're just born, or in the womb, or we're just ready to die, you're there for us, and we're so grateful, because you are so good. You are the good shepherd. And now, God, as you have continued in this congregation, I pray that you continue to bless, to care for, to love, to empower each person in this place to be your grace gift as you have gifted them with your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. In addition to the obvious prayers that we have for our uh, service today, uh, we've been asked to remember uh, two families in our congregation. Uh, First of all, uh, the family of uh, uh, of, um, Chris Seip. Uh, Her mother, uh, Catherine Hoffman, passed away yesterday. 
after a long battle with cancer, and we've been asked to remember them in our prayers. We've also been asked to remember David Lloyd, who, uh, humanly speaking at least, appears to be entering into the final stages of his earthly life, again, after a long battle with cancer. And uh, I spoke to him and to his family this morning, and they very much want us to remember them in our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Blessed Good Shepherd, you established your church with your sacrificial death and your mighty resurrection. Grant that we would always abide in the teaching of the apostles and honor the fellowship of the church, that we would receive your gifts of grace and share those gifts with one another. Guard us against all enemies of your word and keep us within the care of your flock. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty Shepherd, you hold in your hands all the might of men, and you hold accountable those who govern your people. We ask you to grant us good government and good leaders who will honor your purpose, protect your people, and serve the cause of justice and defend us against all threats. Give them wisdom and moderation in their response to this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful shepherds, your wounds are our healing, and your voice calls us to you in every time of need. Hear us on behalf of all who suffer in body or mind, on behalf of those who grieve those whom they love, and to all to whom death draws near. We pray especially for David Lloyd, and for Judy, and for all their family that you would comfort them in this time. We also pray for Chris Seip and her family, that even as they mourn, they would also know the sure and certain hope of the resurrection and life everlasting. We pray you to be with those that we name in our hearts, granting them healing according to your will, sustaining them in every day of trouble, and giving to us all the hope of new and everlasting life to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving shepherd, you love the world so much that you shed your blood for it, and you desire that all would be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. We give thanks for all the blessings you have bestowed upon this congregation through the ministry of your servant, Pastor Roland Sines. We thank you for his zeal for mission, his faithful teaching and preaching, the counsel and care he has given to countless people, and for his servant leadership. By your Holy Spirit, grant him grace, that by his example of faithful devotion to your word, he may continue to be a blessing to many. In your mercy, support and strengthen him, and grant him a cheerful spirit, peace and blessedness, as he retires from his time of service here at Holy Cross and embraces the new opportunities you will provide for him to proclaim your saving name. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Holy Shepherd, we thank you also for the many blessings you have given to our congregation through Anita Signs. We thank you particularly for her leadership in Stephen Ministry, Grief Share, Vacation Bible School, ride for refuge, and above all, that she has been a constant support to Roland in his pastoral call. We thank you also for the comfort you gave others through her work at local hospitals as a chaplain and caregiver. Continue to grant opportunities for her many gifts to be used to your glory and the good of your people. Grant her your peace and strength and a ready spirit to serve as you lead. Lord, in your mercy... Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gracious shepherd, you seek out those who have fallen and restore sinners to repentance. Send forth your spirit to rekindle faith in the hearts of those who have fallen away from the truth or who have never known the gospel. Bless the missions of your church. And particularly today, we ask your blessings upon our partner church in the Ukraine and upon the ministry and Alpha of Alpha and Omega as they reach out with the gospel. According to your will, grant Pastor Signs and Anita opportunity to serve again in this mission field or wherever you may lead them to share your love in Christ. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. And caring shepherd, bless now the people at Holy Cross. As we enter into this time of pastoral vacancy, keep us faithful to your word and fill us with love and care for each other. Grant to this congregation the guidance of your Holy Spirit to choose in due time a suitable pastor according to your will for the blessing of your church in this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. And now, O great good shepherd, we pray you to hear your sheep and to answer our prayers with mercy, granting us those things that are profitable for us for our salvation and keeping from us all things that are harmful. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive now, O Lord, our tithes and offerings. We give you but your own. In any gift we bring, all that we have is yours alone, a trust from you, our King. And now we'll join together to pray the prayer that our Lord himself, the Good Shepherd, taught us. Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy name. Thy thy kingdom kingdom come, thy thy will be done done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive the benediction of the Lord to all of you at Holy Cross and all of you who are watching. Uh, The picture that comes to mind is the resurrected Christ as he comes to the Mount of Ascension for the last time and his hands are outstretched as he continues to bless us. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon each and every one of you and give you his favor, his peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is Beautiful Savior. We're going to ask you not to turn off your computers right after our closing hymn. We have a couple of announcements and also a couple of presentations uh, to make to Pastor Sines and Anita. It's not, as I said, what we had originally planned, but uh, you can't just let a day like this go by without doing something. So uh, we will join together to sing Beautiful Savior wherever we are, another one of the hymns that uh, is very special to Pastor Sines.
We're going to take a a moment now uh, just to uh, share uh, some reflections on this day. Anita, come on up. Ross, come on up. Pastor Chul, I I think you're ready in the back. You might as well come out and uh, join us here too. We're not going to take a a long time. In fact, I'm going to save my big speech for when you come back. (laughs) Um, But I did ask a a couple of friends of our congregation to share with us some words of greeting uh, at this point in time. The first is from Pastor Marvin Bublitz, our regional pastor of the East uh, District. Dear Pastor Sines and Anita, grace and peace to you from our risen Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord of the church calls men to serve his people with word and sacraments. And into this office he called you, Roland. Over the years he blessed you through his word proclaimed and the sacraments administered by you. He also blessed you through his people. At this point in our history, when your full-time service comes to an end, we give thanks to him and rejoice at all he has done through you. We are confident that you will continue to be a witness of his love in all of your future endeavors. We pray the Lord's richest blessings on you both as you embark on the next chapter of your life. And though we will be, you will be away from us here in Ontario, we rejoice that we shall be gathered together in our heavenly mansion for eternity, though we're not praying for that to happen imminently. <laughs> That's just my little addition to the letter. <laughs> May he keep and protect you in his loving care unto that day. And he appends a scripture verse from Luke chapter 17, verse 10. So you also, when you have done everything that you were commanded to do, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. And the second greeting comes from um, your first senior pastor here. Uh, I know he uh, sent a longer email to you, but he also sent a little something to be read uh, uh, at this service. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, especially my friend and co-worker Roland Sines and his beautifully supportive wife, Anita, I feel sorrow that Pastor Sines' ministry of some 14 and a half years at Holy Cross has come to an end in the middle of a global pandemic so that it is not possible for you to gather around to embrace and to thank him for his love and devotion as you would want to. I owe him so much. He was the one who held my hand at the time of my first mission to Ukraine in 1997 when I was the representative of Holy Cross. And he brought me joy in 2005 when he accepted the call of the congregation and joined me on the pastoral staff late that year. Our time together turned out to be very brief, just under three years, as I left in September 2008 to serve as president of the Synod. I wish for you, Roland, and for all of you who were supportive of me during my own time in Kitchener, that the seeds he planted during his ministry at Holy Cross might take root and grow and bring forth the fruit of everlasting lives in the lives of many people. We send him westward now with our love and our wish for every good blessing in Christ. A grateful old friend, not that old, (laughs) Pastor Robert Bugby at First Lutheran Church and Christian Academy in Windsor, who was, as you shared with us in Bible class for many years, the senior pastor here. Now, as I said, I'm going to leave my longer remarks for when you come back. Uh, I do, however, have a little something for you as a remembrance of our time here. And uh, you know, I was <laughs> going to bring my hockey stick and hand it across on the hockey stick blade, but... Um, I guess, two arms lengths. Uh, it might be good for you to open it because there's a little bit of explaining to do. Okay. I really love the tissue paper that goes in bags. I just dumped a whole bag of it in there you last didn't. night. You did. Thank you. Wow. I was coveting something like this. It's amazing how God works these things out. This looks like your handiwork all over it. It is, yes. I Over <laughs> the last week, the, the varnish is still drying. Um, <laughs> Um, it, it's a cross that I uh, put together uh, according to a pattern that I've used for a few of them, including the one that's in our meeting room, uh, conference room here at Holy Cross. Now, there is a little symbolism attached to this. Um, I chose the woods uh, somewhat carefully. Can right. our camera zoom in on this a little bit? To zoom in or something here. 
While well, they're working on that, go ahead. Okay, let me, let me tell you a little bit about the woods that are used in, in uh, this cross. Um, the first, the outer wood, and the one that is at the base of it all is walnut. Uh, your first, uh, it speaks to foundations. Your first parish was in Walnut Grove, <laughs> B.C. And uh, I, I remember Pastor Keller uh, coming to Synod Board of Directors meetings from Walnut Grove with walnuts for all of us. So I presume there must really be walnuts there. Um, the second layer, the white layer, uh, is made of pine. I don't know anything uh, much about the trees and forests of Ukraine, but uh, according to the source of all true knowledge, uh, Wikipedia, um, uh, pine forests uh, exist in Ukraine just as they do in Canada. So uh, knowing that that took up a big part of your ministry, I chose that second. The next layer, uh, the light brown layer, is um, ash. And it's actually uh, a piece, a little piece of a decommissioned pew here from Holy Cross. So you'll always have a piece of Holy Cross uh, wherever you go. Um, and, uh, and then the middle is uh, stained red uh, to remind us of the blood of Christ and its oak. Uh, and as Isaiah reminds us, the Lord makes us to be uh, oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. So um, I invite you to, to take that and hang it somewhere, or if you tire of it, as many of my wood projects I've discovered over the years make beautiful kindling um, in a fireplace on a warm or on a cold and damp night. Um, uh, anyway, my gift to you, Thank you. Um, we're very different people. We've uh, commented on that many times. We're a bit like the odd couple uh, in how we approach things, but the thing that has held us together these 10 years and continues to hold us together is our common confession of the cross of Christ. And so thank you for all of your ministry to me and to our family and all of the things that have happened to us over the last 10 years as well and uh, for your constant care. We'll, I'll say more and, and have the longer spiel uh, when you're back in the fall. But thank to both of you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. It's a little bit sticky. It doesn't want me to let go yeah, of it. So say, there you go. The, the last that's coat a, went on last night. The uh, Holy Cross stick. There you go. Um, yes. I spent more time thinking about what wood to use than actually getting it done. <laughs> Next on the agenda is, pa is Ross Dolson on behalf of the congregation. Pastor Roland and Anita, I stand here today on behalf of the congregation of Holy Cross. Now, if the occasion marking the end of your service here were to happen on any other year, I might or might not be here speaking, but it would certainly be different. It would be marked by an event, probably with lots of food and egg salad sandwiches, and with many more speakers and probably some singing too. And rather obviously, it wouldn't happen in a virtually empty building. But these are the circumstances that we have been given. And words are all that I have for the moment. I do know, however, that online, we have a few hundred people wishing that they could be here, shaking your hands, hugging you, and speaking the words that they would like to speak to. Many of them are likely right now popping comments into the chat section of the online live stream. So have to look at that later. So I'll try to voice a few words for the congregation as a small substitute. Pastor and Anita, many retirement talks have a section where a laundry list of accomplishments and involvements are listed, and I'm not going to do that here for two reasons. Number one, I think I can hear your voice in the back of my head, head saying something about all glory to God. Mm. And number two, the list would be too darn long. So be that as it may, in the nearly 15 years of service here at Holy Cross, you and Anita, and Anita have touched perhaps not all areas of Holy Cross's ministry, but certainly a huge amount of it. By direct involvement, by consultation, by prayer, or with just a kind word, God has worked through you in our presence, and we've been blessed by that. A few small examples do spring to mind, though. First, I don't know how many times on a Thursday evening on my way to praise singers, I've stuck my head in your office door and had a short conversation, sometimes trivial, sometimes deep. But I'll miss those chats, and I don't think I'm the only person that would tell a story like that. Secondly, your enthusiasm for preaching Zoe life versus Beos life, phileo versus agape love. See, some of us do pay attention. So thank you for educating us 
for encouraging us and keeping us pointed toward the cross. And Anita, nobody's going to forget the various ways that you've come from there over to here to talk about Bride for Refuge. Your passion for your work is something that's obvious. And for both of you, your passion for missions has been evident throughout your call with us. Whether that came in the form of leading a team, advising a team, praying for people in the mission field, it's always been obvious that that is part of your calling and will continue to be so. Now, to close off, I spent a little bit of time searching for a passage of scripture that seemed appropriate. And the first one I came with, came up with, you kind of alluded to in your sermon. And it's Proverbs 16, verse 31. Gray hair is a crown of glory. It is gained in the way of righteousness. However, there's a little obvious problem with that one. So instead, I'll leave you with Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. They are plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So Pastor and Anita, as you move to this next phase in your lives and ministries, please know that the congregation here at Holy Cross thanks you and holds you in our hearts, sure and certain that God has those prosperous plans for the two of you. On behalf of the congregation, thank you and Godspeed. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Roland and Anita. Uh, so the newer uh, speaker member here, they wish you a blessing retirement. But one of the person mentioned to me, I don't think so, Pastor Roland is retired. It's just, you know, a vacation. He's going to come back. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for the time we have together here. Uh, you coach me, you and Pastor Ashley. And you teach me how this congregation grow, and how you pronounce the, uh, the name of, how I pronounce the name of the, some of the member here. So uh, thank you so much for the time we have together here. And I hope we keep in touch. Uh, I don't think so, uh, the work is done, but it's a new chapter. And it's gonna be exciting. A new chapter for you. Uh, the newer congregation, they gave you something. Uh, so I give it to you early. So suggestion come from some of the people, including Peter Both. Uh, he wrote a letter on behalf of the newer speaker member here to thank you, you and Adita. And also, they thank you for the word you say, Malami God, every morning. So thank you so much, and God bless you. And God bless your new chapter until so we can get together again in the mission. I hope you will not forget the mission. You will come back for us here and do the mission together. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. I think uh, Anita would like to say a few words. Um, when we were doing the Bible study and I finished right away, she says, oh, I didn't get to say something. I said, well, you, you'll have to come back and say something. So let's... I just wanted to thank the Congregation of Holy Cross uh, for being a wonderfully inviting congregation and one that shares uh, the love of Christ with us, uh, with each other, with our community, and with the world. And uh, I'm just so very grateful for this congregation, the people within it, and just wanted to give you my love. and. Uh, Thank you for everything, and uh, thank you for allowing God to do the things that he has done in this congregation. Thank you. Again, thank you very much. Thank you for watching, everybody who's online. Blessings to you. Remember God's open arms of blessings to you now and every day. He continues to bless us. Now may the Lord continue to be with you and guide you and direct you. In Jesus' name, thank you. Amen. And just one last announcement, what happens after this? Well, next Sunday we carry right on. I'll be teaching Bible class beginning at 10 o'clock. Our service will continue at 11. And until that time, God's richest blessings to all of you.